There was the big story this week from a political standpoint uh, took place on Tuesday and uh, really across the country. But but before we get there, uh, the week uh, started on a really horrific note on Sunday um, in a small town in Texas. Uh, We had another mass shooting where um, uh, 26 people uh, lost their lives. Uh, including some children shot up with um, a semi-automatic weapon. Uh, the uh, shooter was apparently, you know, still are getting the stories, but uh, apparently had uh, issues with uh, family members of his uh, estranged wife. And, um, you know, apparently he was someone who, because of his dishonorable discharge from the Air Force, uh, should not have been allowed to purchase a gun. His uh, He was discharged because he was a domestic abuser. Uh, I, you know, I, I I don't know what to say here. Uh, I feel like we, we do these, one of these now, every couple of weeks. Um, in just a, a three-week period of time, we've had... Over 75 people killed in just two incidents. It's over 600 people shot. Um, you know, this is, it's insane. It's insane. And I, you know, I don't know what's left to say. I, I don't either. I mean, I, I've, I went back and looked uh, at, well, I mean, over the course of years, I've written dozens and dozens of posts and pieces about, you know, mass shootings, gun violence, gun laws across the board. Um, but just since I've been writing for Salon, which was it started in 2014, uh, there literally has been a dozen different times that I have written pieces, you know, these awful, awful discussions of, you know, innocent people being gunned down and what is going to happen as a result what can we do about it what does the nra say what don't they say what can congress do i mean everything from you know i mean the 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 horrific shooting at in sandy hook elementary with all those tiny little kids i mean that was maybe one of my worst days ever uh in observing that and and you know just as you said in the last six weeks we in the last a month, I guess, we've had two of the worst mass shootings in American history have taken place. And the result is just nothing. I mean, there's it, it, the, it's this inertia, this feeling, and I've written this a number of times, that it feels as though we've come to accept gun violence like this, mass violence like this, as like the weather. It's like, well, we had an earthquake in Los Angeles. Oh, we had a hurricane in Puerto Rico. Oh, you know. And in fact, the responses to those things are far more energetic and far more, uh, you know, immediate than what happens with these, with these horrific, uh, gun episodes, these events where massive numbers of people are killed. Now, you know, you and I've discussed this before. There is a difference depending on what the motive is. If if it turns out that the person who did it was motivated, even if he's you know got mental illness himself, but if he says he's motivated by um, Islamic extremism, then you know all of Washington just you know they they uh, lurch into action and decide they're going to change laws and fix policies and ban people and do a whole bunch of things. Uh, certainly, at least the Republican Party does. Uh, if it's anything else, though, I mean, and, and in fact, you know, last year there was a terrible uh, incident in Dallas, Texas, where uh, a man shot a bunch of police officers. That also brought out a very strong response from Donald Trump and from other Republicans. So we've got to do something about this. The cops need to be protected, et cetera, et cetera. In these situations, you know, you have this one this week, well, in the last three weeks. One was a group of country music fans sitting in a, you know, outside in an outdoor arena, getting mowed down with semi-automatic weapons. This one was a bunch of white Christians in rural Texas sitting in church praying. Now, you know, if people, if gun aficionados, gun zealots, gun proliferation activists don't care about those people 
or six-year-olds in an elementary school, I'm not sure what they care about. I don't think that they care. So, you know, I'm like you. I just, I don't know what else to say. In fact, this this week when I tried to write about it, uh, all I could do was point out that Donald Trump has a way of saying that mental illness is, um, you know, nothing you can do. And in fact, right. going back, do you remember that shooting in Oregon that happened in 2015? I think it was in October, about two years ago exactly. And the guy went into the classroom at the community college and shot, I think he shot nine people and injured nine more. And Trump was running at the time and he gave a, he went on Morning Joe and he said, I'm sure it's going to be found that this guy was probably, you know, they seem to be loners. They have all sorts of difficulties. They call people and nobody wants to go out with them, you know. It's the same old story. But what are you going to do? Institutionalize everybody? You're going to have difficulties with many different things. That's the way the world works. That's the way the world has always worked. That's what he said, and I suspect that that's pretty much how, I think he's a reflection of how we're all just sort of thinking, uh, what, what do we, you know, what can we do? And he was in Japan this week when this whole thing happened, mm. and he says to them, you know, well, mental illness happens all over the world, it even happens here, and I'm going, yeah, and all the Japanese are saying, yeah, but we don't have mass shootings every three weeks, right? because they have gun control. Right, of course, and, you know, we mentioned this uh, in the wake of the, um, the 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 terror attack, uh, where the use of the car of the of the of the rental pickup truck in New York City, and we should say, you know what they've done is they've uh, they've changed the barrier structure to make something like that happen uh, more difficult, and wow. you know that is what is, you know, like y- you mentioned a response to natural disasters, well. You know, when we have a flood, we end up building a seawall. Uh, when we have uh, an earthquake, we change the codes on on buildings so that we make sure that, you know, we don't have a, a, a tragedy where buildings can fall easier. We respond in the most practical way possible. If we were to have a terrorist attack, which was actually uh, involved support and coordination from outside of this country, we would uh, demand that uh, our law enforcement agencies, our intelligence agencies address that. But in this instance, we've basically, as a society, uh, been told by our Congress uh, and to some extent also, obviously, our Supreme Court, that there is nothing, there's nothing going to happen. I mean, you know, look, I, I mean, I say this every time, but I think and, and, and frankly, I'm surprised that we don't see more of this. And I think um, uh, I, I have some ideas as to why it might be the case. But the the notion that the CEO of the company that made that gun does not have hundreds, if not thousands of people camped out on the street in front of that guy's house. I'm sure it's a guy um, with pictures of the children who were murdered in that church. Um, I think it, until we see that, we're not going to see anything. It's going to have to be. It's, it's clear that our um, that our uh, political leaders uh, are either incapable or unwilling to do anything about it. And the American public is going to have to and shame any individual who is in any way associated with the production of these killing machines. And I, I don't think uh, until that happens, I don't think we're going to see anything. But we got to take a break, uh, uh, Digby. We talk a little more about this. Other things, uh, obviously, uh, another uh, crazy week in the news. Uh, Donald Trump in uh, in Asia um, promoting both his uh, golf uh, courses and uh, perhaps a nuclear holocaust. We got to take a break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 